Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got 5 Options show. Yeah, and we would like to welcome you all in our second part of interview with Ulrika, aka writer L. Sherman, Louise Sherman, who will today tell us a little bit more about how to become a published writer in the first episode that you can listen to on any podcasting app, Spotify, YouTube, because, you know, we keep all the recordings, guys. You can listen to Ulrika's story. You can uh, learn how she actually started writing again because you have written when you were a child or a teenager. Mm -hmm. So actually, how did she pick it up? And there is a lot of interesting little facts and, and conversations. And today we will focus on creme de la creme. The five steps of becoming a published author and I have already uh, hinted you in the end of the first episode that this will be number one, write every day, two, read in between, three, start creating a brand, four, find your own community of supporters and five, edit, edit, edit. But now we will give Orlika a chance to explain this to us because, you know, ju that's just a tagline. We want more, Marta, don't we? Oh, yes. Mata. <laughs> oh, yes. I think you are into this uh, female addiction mood. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, Apparently you are. Okay, so Urlika, welcome back again. And Thank you. Uh, tell us what do you mean by write every day, which is obvious. But mm. I would just say many writers are complaining yeah. that I don't have Time inspiration. inspiration. Or, exactly. Mm. So please tell us a little bit more about the first step. I think especially when you're in a flow mm -hmm. and you write... You, you don't think about it, you just write every day. But if you're not in a flow or if you have too much work or things going on in your life and you lack inspiration, my best advice would be to sit down and write anyhow, even though it may just be a few sentences or half a page or maybe not on your current book or whatever project you're working on, but just make sure that you get something out from your fingers because the more days in my experience that go between writing you will alienate yourself from your story and from the writing and you'll start telling yourself that oh I can't do this or maybe I shouldn't have done it so the story you tell yourself when you're not writing will start appearing so just do it like anything else yeah I think that's that's exactly the thing when you stop something and the break is longer it's yeah. hard to pick it up it's yeah. the same like with going to a gym or whatever that it's is. like that with everything that you you want to do you of course you know that's the thing we can talk to it's also make it a priority because we can come up with all the excuses in our daily lives as to why we don't have time but maybe it's just five ten minutes mm -hmm. with your laptop or with your phone or with your iPad whatever or a piece of paper a notebook if you're mm -hmm. on the go, sitting on the bus or the train or where you're going, just just jot something down and then you feel like you're still in your story. Yeah, I actually, uh, you, you have ga ga you given us a, an <clears throat> explanation. Mm -hmm. Take your writing professionally. And I think mm -hmm. that actually comes to this mm -hmm. idea because um, two uh, excuses of the writers. I don't have an inspiration mm -hmm. and I don't have time. Uh, if that writers <coughs> are not writers for living, they actually have other jobs. Mm -hmm. But I read that four words, take your writing professionally. Yeah. That means that you are really taking it seriously. Even if you don't have inspiration to write a, I don't know, gone with the wind or you don't have that much time, mm -mm. then that advice of writing at least five, ten minutes. It's more like practicing your craft, would you yeah. say? Yeah, you can say practicing your craft and as you take it seriously. Uh, Ulrika, I, I have to ask you this. Mm -hmm. You you have a husband and mm -hmm. you have two mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and you have your own company. Yeah. 
how do you find time do you have some sort of uh, because uh, for instance you know one of those uh, uh, famous best selling authors they usually had some sort of writing routines mm -hmm. I think not all of them, only a couple mm. of them. But mm. then they make us believe that everyone has to have a writing routine. Mm. So I've heard that my Angelo was actually renting a hotel room for six hours a day, going there only to write. Mm -hmm. uh, some other authors were waking up. I don't remember <coughs> who was that. Waking up at four o'clock in the morning, writing until 10 yeah. and so on. Do, how do you find time? Yeah. So two questions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Now I okay. realized it's two no, questions. It's okay. I write in the evening. So that's also, you know, to begin with, I wrote in the afternoon. So when I was starting my business and I wasn't in control of who was buying my services, I would go out to coffee meetings and network. And then when I would come home, I would sit and say, okay, so what do I do now? So now I've done everything that I could do today. So then I wrote in the afternoon until, you know, like a normal work day. Like mm -hmm. I would work until late afternoon and then the kids would come home and then that's how I did it. Then my business picked up and today I'm working full time on different projects. So I, I, I write in the evening and on the week, weekends. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's my routine. I don't watch TV. So I either write or read. Okay. Yeah, in the evening. So it's in the evening. Aren't yeah. you exhausted? That's the thing. When you find something that is your passion and you really want to do, you find the energy. So I, I get the same energy from it than from you know anything else it's not it's not a hurdle or it's not a chore it's it's something i really want to do i can't wait to sit down with mm -hmm. the laptop literally you know in my lap and write and uh, jump into my stories okay and you also mentioned in uh, in this first step mm -hmm. write every day mm -hmm. a publisher will only take you seriously if you can show that you can finish what you've started yeah because a lot of us can write maybe, you know, five, ten chapters or 25, 30, 40 pages. But to persevere and get the book done and finished is an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And it takes time and it takes focus and it takes, as you said, reading, uh, sorry, writing routines where you make sure that you, you know, set up milestones and say that, okay, next time I will have had to finish, I don't know how many words or how many pages, so you can actually get things done. Because I think that many of the writers, they have this idea that I will send the first three chapters yeah. to a publisher and then they will pick me up because the chapters are so amazing and then I will get a deal uh, and stuff like this. Would you say that this is a little bit of a fa fairy, fairy tale, yeah. uh, wishful thing? Yeah, I would say that today the competition is uh, really harsh. A lot of uh, new authors are out there, a lot of new writers. So if you have to make yourself seen and noticed by publishers, it's not that you can't do it, but maybe it has to be like phenomenal or you have to be the new can follow it or, you know, new. Or you new have some sort of established brand already. For step, some. That's different. That's, mm -hmm. completely, different. that's completely different. If, different. You, if you're new, I think you will have to be able to show that you can deliver. Mm -hmm. You know, when can you actually deliver? How much time did you spend on writing the first three chapters? So you can have written the first 10 chapters mm -hmm. maybe, and then you can't finish the book. And then the contract will maybe be have to be annulled or whatever needs mm -hmm. to happen with it because if you can't finish, finish within the deadline. So I think the first hurdle you have to overcome is finishing your book. Yeah. Okay, that sounds pretty uh, pretty good to me and uh, thank you for that. Marta, what do you think about this first step? So I was thinking that uh, I really love this part of write every day mm -hmm. because I remember we used to write quite a lot with Anna for You've Got Five Options at the mm -hmm. beginning. We were solving all the challenges in a written form as mm -hmm. well and I would just uh, often feel like oh man, I have no inspiration how to solve that challenge, but I would be like okay, that's my only time. Yeah. It's now or never. And I would sit down and I would be like, oh, my God, I'm just going to sit and that's it. But no, mm -hmm. I would sit down and I would actually 90 percent of the time it would actually start coming. Yeah. So very often it is some kind of you feel blocked or you feel that it's not uh, coming. But when you actually put yourself there, there are days it will not come. Uh, so easily, but actually I prove myself 90 percent of the time it would actually start flowing after the first five uh, minutes. Absolutely. And of course, when you are more used to writing and if you've done it every day, like I didn't write yesterday because I came home late from the work that I have in uh, Billund. So I was just exhausted. So I read instead. 
Isn't that the next one? Yes, that's yeah. the next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the step number two is reading <coughs> between. So yeah. uh, I guess uh, from what we under well, from what we can understand, mm -hmm. this is also sometimes maybe a compensation if you cannot yeah. Yeah. write, but probably it's way more behind it. So please, please elaborate. Yeah. And again, where should I start? I've always read. So I read before I wrote, and I read and I read and I read, and I think I've, I don't know. It's something that it's just my go-to thing. So that's maybe the escapism thing, you know, when, you know, you just need to relax and, and, and chill. And then you get inspired and you get new knowledge and you learn about the world. There's so many side effects to reading. So that's why I say, you know, it's if you're exhausted and you can't write, when you read, you get inspiration and you learn new things. And uh, it's such a treat for me to, to read and it uh, actually helps me with the writing so so uh, write and read should go together because you broaden your horizon you learn about how other authors write how they build the sentences so so many dimensions in a book where it's not only a story locations a topic but it's also writing style it's a vocabulary yeah Totally. It's, I think it's almost like, of course, I don't want to say that we all compete. We have a feeling mm. that writers are competing. But mm. in the end of the day, I believe that, you know, uh, some writers just speak to some people. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think everyone can find its own audi audience. Yeah. Uh, so, but it is more like looking at your market like mm -hmm. basically like those are your let's say competitors or possible partners or whatever and it's like not checking what is your competitor doing or what new service it's almost like investing in learning Absolutely. wouldn't you say yeah you can say that and i didn't even see it as market research but that's true that you know you you investigate what do they do and how do they write and what type of topics do they pick up uh, absolutely you can do that but but most it's just relaxation and it's having fun and I read about everything. Mm -hmm. So it's not just within the same genre. What is your favorite genre? I can't say because I've read everything from crime to fantasy. I love fantasy. I'm okay. a Potterhead. So yeah. okay. the new ones, the, even the ones that I read from my kids, I read all the classics. You can even try me, test me on it. Oh. Yeah, a long oh. time ago. So mm -hmm. I, I, just, <laughs> I just love reading. Yeah. And okay. uh, so sometimes I pick up a book, you know, depending on the mood. Like mm -hmm. last night, it had to be chill and relax because I was exhausted. Marta, what is your favorite genre? I am a little bit of the same person. And mm -hmm. I think the most fantastic year in my life when it comes to reading was actually this year when you, Anna, made the challenge. Mm -hmm. For the books, like you had like 35 or I don't remember, 40 different categories mm -hmm. yeah. for the books. And I was on maternity leave. I remember this year so amazing because I just <coughs> read so many different mm -hmm. books yeah. from so many different genres. And I feel that this uh, year my horizon has really broadened because you, of course, I would have some go to mm -hmm. uh, types mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. but I, I couldn't say because I just enjoy reading it it has to be well written yeah that's uh, yeah. because you can have the most uh, interesting topic but if it's written that you feel you're struggling through mm -hmm. the pages that oh, we, yes that's what determines that is not a book for me mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the uh, the flow in the writing mm -hmm. uh, that has to be there but that book challenge was awesome yeah I, and now when I think about it I think I will create the book the book challenge again I also need some more that's discipline good idea for myself Very good idea I think yeah. I, I I did it twice and I have I will admit not complete my own challenge but mm. some people did Marta yeah. did. Mm -hmm. and there were two years I think we had I had like came up with 30 mm -hmm. uh, categories and then I think 33 and um, and yeah it, it it challenges you to read out of your comfort zone yeah yeah so True. I think it, it's a, it's a good idea yeah. I think I will do it again this the, for 2019 I'm signing up you are signed. Okay, perfect. So am I. Okay, yeah. so I have two, you have two, followers two members on Facebook <laughs> who will join the challenge. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but then we have number three. And the step number three is start creating a brand. And I think yeah. many writers might have a problem with yeah. that. So I'm a lot into brand image. So mm -hmm. if you look at what I'm doing on other sites, it's a, it's all about building your business, building your brand. And you, if you believe in yourself as, a, as an author and... Um, take it professionally, you should start building that brand around it because then you're creating your universe and you're also showing yourself by doing it that you're believing that this is a serious path and what you're doing is serious. It doesn't have to be like, 
I don't know how many followers to begin with or, you know, something that you pay a lot of money to do, but decide on what should your name be and what should be images that you would like to have connotated with what you're doing and build a context around it, build small stories. So I started a Facebook and Instagram last Christmas, had no followers because I hadn't revealed who I was. So think about starting an Instagram and a Facebook without being able to invite your friends to yeah. like your pages. Mm-hmm. That was quite intimidating. Yeah I, yeah, I could imagine. Like zero to begin with. So I actually built, started building the community with hashtags only on Instagram. And on Facebook, it just moved a little bit more slowly until when did I reveal it? Was it after I got my publisher? Yeah, I think so. It was in August today. Then obviously things escalated and got more followers because then people who knew me also went in and saw who I was. So it's building that community today. I have a website also. Exactly. And you have then, a you have a website yeah. which is by the way really beautiful. I have the best uh, graphics designer. She's based here in Aarhus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little Creature Inc. And she also did my business side. Mm-hmm. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and I I think that uh, that uh, that could be that you know uh, intimidating part like oh my god website oh my mm-hmm. but I think in this uh, ev- this reality it's um, you you cannot be a writer without a website. I'm it's afraid. your business card. It's, it's your yeah. Again, everything ties together with building. It's building a brand. It's building a business like you would see. You're building any other business, so you're mm-hmm. building your write a business the universe is different what you're selling is different but i would say you know how you do it mm-hmm. it's the same yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but before we will go to the mm-hmm. community of mm-hmm. supporters the last thing and i think that this is something that you already have hinted a couple of times and also in this mm-hmm. explanation that when we talk about creating a brand mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be you no you can be the the version mm-hmm. of yourself mm-hmm. that is the writer mm-hmm. so for instance uh, on your website only under the category about me mm-hmm. you can see your actual mm-hmm. picture mm-hmm. Uh, you actually have a cartoon mm-hmm. image mm-hmm. on the website and on your uh, mm-hmm. social media. Yeah. So it is allowed yeah. totally to create totally. your own writing yeah. persona. Yeah. And I think that this is one of those things that writers are forgetting about, that yeah. you are a writer. Write your own writing persona. Because I think that that's um, now I know that you is you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's brilliant because it really uh, put a distinction and it very well fits the genre you are <clears throat> writing in. You have so many facets of yourself and you use yourself in different ways depending on what you're doing and uh, what type of job you're doing. So I think creating that mm-hmm. persona around what I'm writing that fits the genre, or that fits the universe was just something that came naturally. And then I didn't have any problems with standing out and saying who I was, but I still wanted it to be, you know, the part of me that's linked to the writer. Mm-hmm. So that so you got that distinct feeling that this is what you get from me when you're in that universe. And then when you jump into another universe, which is my business universe, it's a different person. But you can see like a red thread through it because you can see that it's me altogether when yeah. you meet me in different situations. Yeah, yeah. you still shine through the... Yeah. The person. Yeah. Uh, Ulrika, mm-hmm. one last thing before we go to step number mm-hmm. four. If you would have to give one advice to someone who is a writer, has nothing to do about mm-hmm. branding, what that person should start with? You should start creating um, an Instagram and Facebook page. Yeah, yeah that absolutely. would be that would be yeah. the number one. Yeah, because that's where you meet the book bloggers. That's may, where you meet the book reviewers. That's where you can show pictures of uh, the universe that you're creating. That's where people, yeah, follow you. Mm-hmm. And um, I would say, especially for English written books within the genre, it's Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's mm-hmm. a very good advice. So then we have step number four, which is find your o- own community of supporters. Yeah. And I think number, uh, I, I think the Instagram remark kind of fits mm-hmm. because probably you have mm-hmm. found your supporters mm-hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you also shared between this in- uh, before this interview an interesting mm-hmm. story. When you started to share your uh, your book uh, mm-hmm. with uh, with your colleagues, mm-hmm. and actually from one of the potential supporters, you found a co-writing partner. Mm-hmm. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about oh, this? Oh yeah, I can. I'm trying to breach this subject without revealing too much. 
So in November, I have a former co-worker, she's not in Denmark, she's in another European country, whom I gifted my first book for her birthday, because we were always, you know, really on the same, how can you say, balance line. We just took to each other. She was in finance, she's still in finance, I'm in HR, and we just talked a lot about this passion for writing. And what she then confessed to me was that she's also writing on the side. And I was like, yeah, sometimes there's just more to the universe that you can see, you think you know a person, and then, you know, there's so much more under the surface. So we are brewing on something for the new year that I can't reveal yet. But we can check it on your website. Oh yeah, you can check. I'm hinting to it already mm -hmm. on uh, primarily Instagram and Facebook right now. Yes, for everyone, Urlik has mm -hmm. all data, including the website address, social yeah. media accounts, everything will be included in the show notes uh, to both of the episodes on our website. So then you definitely have to go and check it out. Uh, so uh, there is a cooperation coming out of it. There is. And the fun part of this, it is that, you know, writing can be quite, you know, lonely. And it's something that I like, that it's where you can actually withdraw and then you can focus on only being yourself with your laptop, with your writing. But then it can also start off coexisting between two people who are messaging back and forth about daily life and incidents and things that they've experienced. And do you remember? And can you recall? And what if this had happened instead? So it's a it's a confession series. Yeah, because that much is already revealed um, between two co-workers, but totally fiction. Just, you know, riding and building on, it's so much fun. Yeah, mm. You should be in I, our heads I, I when we could, ride it. I could yeah. imagine. I could imagine. Just imagine two best friends messaging together about what happened throughout the, yeah. Yeah, the day mm -hmm. and then build that into a story. Yeah where you get both sides of the yeah yeah uh, i think that especially the point you made uh, writing can be a very lonely yeah. uh, some say it's the loneliest job in the world mm -hmm. because you sit weeks months sometimes years only with your with yourself with your a typewriter or your computer depending what you are using so it can really be lonely so it sounds amazing and probably that's also why you need your own community of supporters yeah. right thing is that I have a publishing company and uh, within that publishing company there are other authors. Uh, so I also have that community. So we have a closed Facebook group where we can just shoot. I need somebody who can translate something in Spanish for me because all of a sudden this lady started speaking Spanish. Okay, <laughs> I can translate Spanish and then we help each other like that. So that's another very fantastic part of be you know being picked up by a publisher is that you get fellow authors. Mm -hmm. that you can bounce things back and forth between. Of course, I think everyone would be dying to ask you, how did you get picked up by a publisher? <laughs> I would say for sure you were writing every day yeah. and you were reading in mm -hmm. between and you were starting to create your own brand mm -hmm. and then you found a community of supporters mm -hmm. and then did the publisher magically appear? No, I don't think they do ever. <laughs> and what I've experienced in my life, in whatever I do, everything is hard work. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes to you. Have to be able. You have to be willing to put yourself out there and spend a lot of time on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But what I did was that I already sent my first book to a couple of American publishing houses, mm -hmm. but never heard from them. Okay. So I was like, okay, took a break from it and thought that okay, maybe I'm just in the pile of I don't know how many authors they heard from this month. So I made a Google search for um, publishing houses in Denmark. Mm -hmm. within the genre mm -hmm. and I picked uh, this one it's called Nilumbo and Nilumbo is Latin for lotus flower so it's called Nilumbo Publishing and I wrote her the owner of the company and uh, she's like uh, yeah send me whatever you have so I sent her my first two books and a couple of novels novellas not mm -hmm. novels novellas and then she's like we have to meet so after my vacation that was right in my vacation in July and in August we met Mm -hmm. And she picked it up on the spot. Fantastic. Yeah. But Ulrika, one question. Mm -hmm. The company is Danish publishing yeah. house. Yeah. You write in English. Yeah. And do they do uh, publish in English. Yeah. So that's, you know, another thing. She's also a startup company, this publishing mm -hmm. house. So, yeah. so I'm kind of on her journey at the same time mm -hmm. with publishing books in both English and 
Danish. So yeah, the market for her is easier with the Danish books. But we have decided that I will stick with writing in English because that comes more naturally to me. And then we are, you know, contacting people, you know, outside Denmark, and we're also publishing not only in Denmark. So I know to begin with, it may go a little bit slower in Denmark with English writing, but then you know the pace might pick up faster. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that's also you know, do you need to be picked up from a big? Is that your dream to be picked up from you know a big publishing house like from Politiken or Gyllendale? Absolutely, go for it. And yeah, it could be my dream, but I actually didn't contact them because I I just wanted to get it out there, not necessarily how. And I thought that maybe because I'm an indie author and she's a startup we would be a better match. So I get a lot of say in in what we do and how we do it. And I can come up with any crazy idea of what I want to write next. And she's in on it. And I love being part of that journey. Yeah. So maybe that could also be, you know, an advice, you know, figure out who you want to be picked up by because of course we all want to be famous maybe, maybe. <laughs> most of us uh, yeah don't yeah. know no but you know you want to get it out we, there we and all... how do you get it out there yeah yeah I think we all dream, the writers, they always dream about having their book in a bookstore, on a bookshelf yeah. exposed. Yeah. So maybe that kind of fame. Yeah. Uh, but very good point, because I think with big <clears throat> publishing houses, you don't really have much of saying regarding the cover, the artwork, the what to write next and so on. So that's a very good point, Ulrika. And you can also be let down so many times that you stop believing in yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you only sent to the big publishing houses and you're being let down because they have so many authors that want to be published by them I'm not saying you shouldn't do it but yeah. maybe you know think about what is realistic mm-hmm. when you're a new author and do it and it's not a co-publishing thing she publishes everything and she carries all the expenses because we talk a little bit about what type of publishers there are out there because that's also a jungle mm-hmm. sometimes you co-publish meaning that you also carry the expenses I don't she carry all the expenses and then I get a percentage cut of each sold book And those are the contracts to go by, I would say. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't have to put your own money in it unless, you know, that's your only option if yeah. to be published, that you can co-publish. Okay, that's that's also a very good point. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we mm-hmm. almost ran out of time and uh, it, it we have the last one, mm-hmm. which is edit, edit, edit. If there is one line you would have mm-hmm. to give us for edit, 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 what would that be? That would be that the writing part is the, how can you say, what takes up the least space. It's mm-hmm. actually the editing and the proofreading and maybe making everything ready for publish that takes up. So once you've written your book and you think you've spent so much time on it, you will have to double the amount on the editing and the proofreading uh, part. Just a question. Do you have a proofreader? Yeah, I, okay. have, a, I have a couple that I mm-hmm. use. Uh, those are professional proofreaders or those are more like friends who tell um, you stuff? They are people who has the right skills within languages and communication and the mm-hmm. native. Okay. The native speakers. So They're they are speakers. Yeah, Americans. And uh, are, those, America. yeah. are those uh, services that you are buying or those are the friends you know or your network? At, at, at the moment, it's network. Okay. Yeah. A very lucky mm-hmm. lady or then. Oh, that's also a jungle. Yeah, yeah. I could imagine yeah. that. I could definitely imagine that. <coughs> okay, perfect, Ulrika. Um, I think that you also uh, have written on your website, correct me if I'm wrong, that you would love to advise people who are yeah. starting writing. Yeah. So guys, if you would like to know mm-hmm. more or ask mm-hmm. more specific questions mm-hmm. to Ulrika, please visit her website. It's writerlsherman.com. Mm-hmm. You can see the address in show notes in this episode. Uh, so then you can get in touch with her directly and she will help you and answer all your questions. Thank you so very Absolutely. much for being here. Thank you for and having thank me. Thank you for, for this wonderful episode. Thank you, Marta, for, for reminding me about book challenge that I should restart the reading challenge. You definitely should. It was awesome. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. And um, we will hear each other in the next episode. Thank you. Thank bye, you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show, where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, 
send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! <laughs>